So you want to get into iRacing in 2023? Congratulations, there's never been a better time to get into iRacing. It is for me the most complete simulator on PC and it's better than ever, but it doesn't make it easy. <laughs> to work out where to start, does it? Maybe you want to end up somewhere like this. This is like a 50 car grid at Daytona in Formula 3 cars. Maybe you want to be doing the Daytona 24 hours, but where do you start as a beginner in iRacing? How do you get up the ranks? How do you increase your licenses? Where do you have the most fun racing? In this video, I'm going to let you know my recommended route into iRacing in 2023. And hopefully, hopefully you're going to find this very, very helpful. Let me know in the comments if you do right let's get into it because when you download this all iRacing you're only going to be able to do these two series that's it at the beginning in terms of road racing you've got the mx5 championship and you've got the formula v championship now in my opinion these two series lead up to the pinnacles of motorsport in two different areas on the right of formula v that leads up to f1 so in iRacing you do the mercedes w13 championships and the mx5 that leads up to gt tin top racing and ultimately the Le Mans hypercars. So that's what you got in these two championships. Now, if, yours, if your thing doesn't look at this at the beginning, all you want to do is make sure you tip rookie because if your screen looks like this, you're going to have a load of events that you can't even do yet. I'm going to show you in this video how you get these events, but we're going to start here with the rookie ones. Which one should you do? Now, my recommendation is start with the MX-5 and I'm going to show you right now. Right, here we go, everyone. Welcome to Mazda MX-5 Rookie Racing in iRacing. This is my recommended pathway into iRacing, I recommend you do this to begin with. Why? I'm going to let you know the Mazda is such a fun car to drive. I still drive this car at the highest levels in iRacing. I drive it in the Advanced Mazda Championship. I drove it in Jimmy Broadbent's 23 hours as well, which is a lot of fun. But it's also a very, very, very technical car to drive. It's actually quite a difficult car to extract all the pace from. And if you can master, if you can master the Mazda, then you can pretty much drive anything in iRacing. Now, the first rule this is going to sound controversial. The first rule of Mazda MX-5 Rookie Racing is get the hell out of Mazda MX-5 Rookie Racing because the racing in these championships is utter, utter carnage. You've got to remember, you're with a car that's very difficult to drive, very technical, and basically there's going to be a lot of carnage. And you're going to have more fun with the Mazda in different championships. So I know that sounds counterintuitive. I just said this is my uh, you know, preferred pathway into iRacing, but it is just that, a pathway. So how do you get out of Mazda MX-5 Rookie Racing? Right, well, there's two ranking systems in iRacing. You've got your iRating, which is basically how fast you are as a driver, and you also have your safety rating, which is basically how safe you are as a driver. Now, if you saw there when I went wide a little bit earlier, I got an instant point. It popped up at the top, said you got one instant point. Those instant points determine your safety rating, and the way iRacing works out is it sort of knows what the average instant points for a lap is. So maybe on a lap you should be getting 0.3 instant points or something. And if you get more instant points than that average, your safety rating will go down. And that's all we care about in iRacing, definitely at the beginning, but also generally I would say all the way through, because your safety rating is what determines your license. And if you have the license, you can go and race faster cars online. Not just faster cars, but also race in sort of championships against safer drivers, which is what we want to do. Now, the Mazda MX-5 Rookies, you can see I'm having a great battle here with my friend Nils. He's not really my friend. I've, I don't never met him before. We're having a great battle here. That's the great thing about iRacing. But you can imagine this in an actual race with about 30 of these cars. Oh, my word. And we're having all sorts of problems. Now, you see there I've got a car contact 0x iRacing determined that contact as not consequential enough to give an instant point. Now, normally in iRacing, if there is contact between cars, both cars will get an instant point. It's not like other games like Gran Turismo where the penalty system will try and determine who should get a penalty. So we want to get out of rookie racing and we want to get into the next classes. What happens if you do that? What happens if you do enough of these races and you basically don't pick up the penalty points? and you progress into the next class. What can you do as a D-licensed driver? Well, I'm going to show you right now. So we're back to the menu here, and we were a rookie driver. I just wanted to show you, look how many splits there are of Mazda MX-5 rookie races here. And then when you compare that to the Formula V, the Formula V just is not as well populated, which is part of the reason why I recommend doing the Mazda Championship. Now, if we get enough safety rating, I'll show you here how it works. This is my license. You can see my I rating here. This is my driver rating. And you can see my safety rating here. 
Now, if you get your safety rating to 3.0 or above, at the end of that season, you will get promoted to the next license. Or if you get it to 4.0, you get promoted immediately. So I recommend at the beginning of iRacing, getting your safety rating up to 4.0 and you are going to get promoted to D-Class. And you are now going to have access to all of these championships. Now, there's a recommended pathway here for me, but now you can start having a lot more fun. Now, my recommended pathway here is this, the Ferrari GT3 Challenge. GT3 racing in iRacing is really one of the temples for me. It's where you can have so much fun, not just in sprint racing, but also in endurance racing as well. And this is an absolutely fantastic pathway through. Now, you can do other stuff as well. You can do the Toyota GR86 racing. This is at the same track we were just at in the Mazda. This is also a free car. You can see this is very, very, very popular. So I'm going to show you that as well. But my recommended pathway is the Ferrari G3 fix. This week, you can see it's at Laguna Seca. That's another free track in iRacing or included in your subscription. Now I'm going to show you what this is all about. So here we go. Ferrari fixed racing. Just one progression on the license. And we're now able to race in actual GT3 cars. This guy's pulling over. Not sure why. Let's crack on, my guy. Let's crack on. And, um, oh. Now, Ferrari GT3 racing also has a reputation of being a little bit crazy. And that, again, is because we're still in the D licenses here. And we still got drivers who have just progressed out of rookies. But this is the pathway. And here we're driving an actual GT3 car. Now, why do I recommend this? Well, firstly, the Ferrari is pretty much my favorite GT3 car in the game. It handles absolutely superbly. Again, this is my preferred car for me when I'm racing at the top of the game. And it's a great car to learn in because, again, it's all about dabbing the brake, getting in the car to rotate, inducing that rotation, trail braking, being gentle with the throttle on the exit. Oh, I've stood the car here. And again, we're going to get some of those instant points. And this is a fixed championship as well. Got to be careful about the rejoins. This is a fixed championship. What that means is no messing around with setups. There's a whole other side to wire racing with setups that we're going to get into in this video but you do not have to worry about that in this video in this uh, championship because the gt3 fixed championship is a fixed setup championship so you don't have to worry about people having a better setup than you that's absolutely great and again it goes on some of the free tracks we're on a free track today so all you need to do is buy the ferrari gt3 car if you can prove yourself in this championship that you are a clean racer then you will progress and you will race with with other clean drivers this is still sort of like a sorting championship for me but the fixed setup aspect is absolutely huge don't need to worry about setups at all you can just log on and race i'm struggling with this corner here right so this is a ferrari f this is a ferrari gt3 fixed championship my recommended pathway having a lot of fun here in the gravel even the windscreen wiper is going mental even though there's no rain in iRacing racing just yet now what can you do once you progress from the ferrari g3 fix this is where it gets really 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 interesting let me show you so we've managed to progress in the Ferrari GT3 fix. It was very difficult, but it was worth it. And we're now Class C. What are we going to get in Class C? All of this stuff. This, for me, is now you're in iRacing. To be honest, you don't really need to get past Class C to have a lot of fun in iRacing. Why? Because you get this. This is the endurance racing in, in i I say Grand in iRacing. This is, for me, where you have the most fun. On the weekends, you can see here is a Saturday today. 7 o'clock today, there is going to be a three-hour endurance race. People are going to enter with teams. You can enter in all of these GT3 cars. This, for me, is probably the best weekly experience in our race that you can get. So I really, really, really recommend that you do that. That's a spa this week. Now, these circuits often are at big boy circuits that you have to pay for. And by the way, if you're looking to get into wire racing, I do have a affiliate code, which will be in the description. I think that gives you some discounts and it definitely gives me some wire racing credit. So if you do sign up, please do use it and let me know if you use it so I can thank you. But you can see here, these are the circuits that is going around this season. What an absolute collection of circuits. Monza, Brands Hat, Spa, Silverstone, Daytona, you got into uh, that's not Interlagos, yeah, Interlagos, Bathurst, and then finishing at Le Mans. What an absolutely amazing list circuit here. I've done seasons where I've done every single race here, racing on the Saturday, Sunday. So I really recommend that you get into that. You can also now start to get into some more of the faster um, single seater cars. So the Moser F3 race, I really, really, really recommend this. This is very, very difficult. 
I'm going to do a separate video on how to drive the F3s. This is where I started night racing, by the way. I did a national championship in the UK against real-world drivers. We were all real-world racing drivers, and then we went online and iRacing in F3s, and I learned an awful lot. Here's the Advanced Mazda uh, Championship at Road Atlanta this week. Now, that's really, really, really good quality racing there. That's absolutely fantastic. You've also got uh, the Formula IR. This is a really fun car to drive as well. Recommend that as well. Don't have it at the moment, but that is a fun car to drive. And then you've got the Touring Car Races. We have four Touring Cars now, which is also fun to drive. I use the Audi, which is a bit of a weird car to drive because it's, uh, it's um, front-wheel drive. And then you have the Michelin Pilot. I don't recommend this one. This is a bit of a weird championship. I don't really recommend GT4's full stop. My McLaren GT4 is not eligible there, weirdly. So here, basically, you can have a lot of fun doing the endurance racing. And that really is, honestly, some of the best of it. But I'm going to show you what happens if you progress up to B rank and what I recommend there. So now you have the sprint racing. This is uh, still a fixed championship. So you have fixed racing there. And I think you also have the open championship here. And they normally go to the same circuit. So basically, you can alternate between doing sprint racing in your GT3s fixed and then you can immediately go in and do an open one as well and that's a really good cadence to do. Formula Renault 3.5 as well, I've never driven but that looks pretty fun. The prototypes, this is a really really fun car to drive. So you've got a fixed championship for the prototypes, that's so fun and then you've got proper IMSA. Right, this probably is the premier thing to do in iRacing at the moment. You've got the BMW Hybrid which I need to buy and review. You've also got your G3 cars and you've got the LMP2 there as well. So that's a three class championship. You've got the IMSA Sprint and you've got the IMSA Endurance. So I wouldn't do the IMSA Pilot with the touring cars and, and the GT4s. It's all about this one for me. Now, if you get up to A class, this is where you get the Mercedes W13 stuff, I think, don't you? Yes, here we go. Mercedes W13 stuff. They call it Formula A now. This is absolutely insane. Um, I have the oh, I have the uh, Mercedes W12. I need to buy the W13, but those cars are absolutely mad to drive. And then you have the European Endurance races, which are six-hour races. These are also really fun to drive. These are GTE cars there, and is it still GTEs? Yes, yeah, so it's still you can drive the GTEs. The GTEs are going to leave iRacing. racing. I imagine they're going to go Legacy. They're not going to be used in. Le Mans racing from next season I think they're going to be replaced by GT3s again but the GTs essentially have no ABS I think they have limited traction control as well they're a lot harder to drive you can see I bought a lot of the GTs because I really 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 enjoy driving the GTs so that is my recommended pathway in iRacing start in the Masters and the Rookie Championship and get the hell out of there as quickly as possible then go into the Ferrari G3 fix that will give you your taste of GT3 driving then you can do endurance racing you can find mates you can join our discord you can do all that kind of stuff and then you can go to the IMSA stuff then ultimately at the top of the pyramid here you really have the Mercedes W13 racing and you also have the uh, Le Mans uh, hypercar racing at the moment with that BMW hybrid car that you have in the IMSA series and that will come to Le Mans I think next season as well so I really hope you find this video helpful. Make sure to subscribe, by the way, if you did. It really helps me out. I just do this in my past, in my part time. And yeah, best of luck in iRacing 2023. Honestly, there's never been a better time to get into iRacing. That's 100% true. And when they bring rain, and they may bring rain in this season, it's going to go to the next level. So it's a great time to get in before they do that. I hope you enjoy this, and I'll see you soon next time.